Hi, I'm Z, and I'm a tinkerer in the Idea Lab at Imagination Station. What we're doing in there this whole month is making wooden toys by hand, and part of that process includes staining and finishing the wood. What I'm going to teach you today is how to make your own stains for wood at home. If you like what we're doing here, remember to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to check out this or any more ideas, you can visit our website, imaginationstationtoledo.org. The tools we're going to be using today include things like the stove top, a pot, something to strain with, a knife, and maybe even a blender. The items that we're going to be using are also things that you have in your own kitchen, including fruits, vegetables, and spices. We're going to process these items in many different ways, including boiling, blending, smashing, all sorts of fun stuff. Let's get started. I'm going to start off by showing you the easiest process first of just taking things that you would find in your kitchen and just rubbing them on the wood. We're going to start with some red cabbage and all you have to do is fold it over so it fits in your hand and just kind of rub it in there. It's squeaky a little bit because of the moisture on the wood and it creates a light purple. The next one that I'm going to show you is the blackberry. And this one, you have to smoosh with your fingers. And the juice gets rubbed into the wood that you then wipe off to leave this really pretty dark purple stain. And then we'll try one of the blueberries. That doesn't really leave any stain, but that's okay. Part of science is testing things out and figuring them out for yourself. We did a lot of tests. So you should do some tests at home. Make sure you write everything down so you can experiment over and over again. The next process we're gonna be doing is taking the spices to make an emulsion with oil to stain the wood. All it involves is mixing the spices and the oil. So there is some processing, but very little. We'll need spices, oil, a cup, and a paintbrush. Let's get started. We're gonna be taking paprika and measuring it very carefully. So make sure that you measure correctly and write it down so you can be an at-home chemist. The ratio that we've found is that one part spice, two parts oil works really well. But try it at home and see if you can find something else that works. And then we'll be mixing it together. Once you've mixed it, the next part will be applying it onto the wood. All you have to do is dip your brush in and paint it on. It's important to wipe it down once you're done, that way you have a clean finish on the wood. Now let's show you the difference between the paprika and the turmeric. We're going to repeat the same process in the same way to show the differences. And then the same two to one ratio. Then we'll mix this one up as well. And now let's get our side-by-side -side comparison. Things like paprika and turmeric may be less likely to dissolve in water than they are in oil. So it's important to try different techniques to figure out what works for you. The next process I'm going to show you is using the blender to make a stain. So here we have some spinach. We're going to use about two cups, but you can add as much or as little as you need for the amount of stain that you'll need. Think about the size of your project or how many projects you plan on doing. You also want to make sure you add enough liquid to your blender that it'll blend smoothly. And that varies for you, so try it out. I'm pulsing the blender to make sure that all of the leaves can fall down into the mixture one at a time and I don't have to scrape as often. Some of the things that we found were that different types of liquid, oil or water, will leave different colors on the stain. So try it at home. If you don't have oil, then you can use water. You can try using any other liquid in your mixtures to see if you can change the color or consistency. What we're gonna have to do now is to strain this mixture. Once you feel comfortable that you've gotten a good amount of liquid out, you can go ahead and stop doing that and start staining. You're gonna take your brush and paint on the stain. Now, we found that with the natural dyes, some of them take a little bit longer to sink in to get the color that you want. Don't be afraid to leave it on there for as long as you want. These dyes will also last for about a month in the fridge. If you don't have a blender, but still want a green pigment, Spinach leaves are another one that you can also rub on raw. This way is a bit messier though. All of these stains will stain, so try to be careful with things around you to make sure that your cutting board, your table, your stove top don't end up 
green. Oh, I just boiled some water for my tea, but boiling water can also work to enhance colors in different stains. We're gonna do it with some blueberries, which you can either mash by hand, or you can use a spoon. The important part is that the color of the blueberries actually comes from their skin and the heat that comes from boiling water. If you don't have a kettle, you can also just cook it on the stove. Once you get all your berries combined, you're gonna wanna let it set and simmer for about 10 minutes in order for everything to kind of come together. Once you've finished cooking down your mixture and straining it, you can put it in a container with a lid, label it, date it, and put it in the fridge. But once you're done with that, you're good to paint it right on. The cooked blueberries are way brighter than the raw ones. You can cook down other things that I've shown you, the paprika, the turmeric, the spinach, anything like that, and see if you get other colors. The next step is to make the sealant for the stains. Our sealant that we use involves beeswax and jojoba oil, and you mix them in different parts. What I'm gonna try to do is do about a quarter of a cup of beeswax to about two tablespoons of the oil. And once you cut off a piece, break it up so that it fits inside of your container. What we have set up here is called a double boiler. It means that nothing is boiling in the pot except for water, and you put a jar of glass on top of it in order to melt things at a much slower pace. So we're gonna try to do a one part beeswax to one half part oil. And now we wait. And wait. And wait. One of the things that we learned is that if you try to apply it just with a brush while it's still hot, you end up with a really thick, really waxy mixture, which you don't really need. You only need a very, very thin layer in order to fully seal your toys. Now, the wax that you do scrape off, you shouldn't waste. It'll all come back together, and you can use this still. It's still good wax. Another thing that you can do is once your jar is cooled down enough for you to handle, you can pour your wax into a mold. We've chosen to do an ice cube tray, but you could also easily do candy trays or any other molds you might have lying around. An important thing to remember about all of the wax that we're using is that everything you use the wax on will have a waxy residue on it. So make sure you set those aside and don't use them for other food after that. So the final step is to seal the toy. What I have here is an example of one of the toys we're making in the tinkering space. It's gonna be a car, but I haven't attached the wheels yet. The reason is I need to polish it first to make sure that everywhere on the car gets polished and not just places you can see. And with the bar, it's a lot easier to make a very small coat, which is all that you really need to seal it. Hey, that looks pretty good. If tea stains my teeth, maybe it'll stain wood. Let's find out. So here I have a mixture of both tea and coffee that are both super concentrated. I don't want to drink tea that strong. But it's necessary in order to get a good color on your toys. Once I'm finished with this, all I have to do is seal the wheels and assemble. And all you have to do is come down to Imagination Station and build a wooden toy yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe and visit our website, imaginationstationtoledo.org. Now, what are you waiting for? No, seriously, what are you waiting for? Come on, come make a wooden toy. Are you still watching that? What did I just say? Let's go, let's go, come on.